They'll keep us on the right track if we'll let them. But we need our Lord. We need to walk close to Him. I'm going to turn the service over to Brother Allen. May the Lord bless you. Let us stand for a word of prayer. Heavenly Father, we bring our thoughts unto You now. And with Your great love and strength, Lord, we look unto You. Thanking You, Lord, that You're so gracious and kind to us. And that You are our Father to help us in our days and times of need. To give us instruction. Lord, we look to our earthly fathers for instructions And we always looked to them for that comfort, Lord, that they were able to give that when we laid down at night that we were safe. Lord, we don't have those. Now many of us don't have our parents. But we do have a Heavenly Father. That Lord, You are more than what they could give us comfort. You watch over us. You keep us, You help us in Your Word. You give us understanding. You give us light. You give us a motive to follow You and to listen to the teaching of Your Word. Now, I pray that You would help this unworthy servant tonight as I stand here. May the words of wisdom be able to be expressed from Your great wisdom, Lord, not from mine, but from Yours. Bless now your people and those that we hear by internet. May you help them. May you guide in this service, we pray in Jesus Christ's name. Amen. You may be seated. If you have your Bibles, turn with me into St. Luke chapter 24. We'll start at verse 13. And behold, two of them went that same day to a village called Emmaus which was from Jerusalem about three score furlongs. And they talked together of these things which had happened. And it came to pass that while they communed together and reasoned, Jesus himself drew near and went with them. And their eyes were holden that they should not know Him. And He said unto them, What manner of communications are these, that you have one to another, as you walk and are sad? And the one of them, whose name was Cleopas, answered and said unto him, Art thou only a stranger in Jerusalem? And hast not thou known the things which are come to pass? There in these days, and he said unto them, What things? And they said unto him concerning Jesus of Nazareth, which was a prophet mighty indeed, and word before God and all the people, and how the chief priest and our rulers delivered him to be condemned to death, and have crucified him. And we trusted that it had been He which should have redeemed Israel. 
And besides all this, today is the third day since these things were done. Yea, and certain women also of our company made us astonished, which were early at the sepulcher. And when they found not him, his body, they came saying that they had seen a vision of angels, which said unto, which said that he was alive. And certain of them which were with us went to the sepulcher and found it even so as the women had said, but him they saw not. And he said unto them, unto them, O fools and slow of heart, to believe all that the prophets have spoken. Ought not Christ to have suffered these things and to enter into His glory? And beginning at Moses and all the prophets, He expounded unto them in all the Scriptures the things concerning Himself. And they do nigh unto, unto the village which they went, whither they went, and he made as though he would have gone farther. I'll stop reading it, that particular place. In that 17th verse, he asked him a question. What manner of communications are these? You know, as Brother Bud mentioned, tragedy has hit, hit Asia. And Brother Tim was telling me that there had been 120, last he heard 125 dead, 125,000, and the toll could rise to 300,000. And I heard today that the earth moved on its axis. And also that there was a certain island that was moved 60 some inches. And no doubt the so-called religious world today is wondering if this is the big one. But it's not. This is, uh, you might say, the tremor before the big one comes. But there will be one day when something more disastrous than this hits the world and people are done beginning to wonder why the United States hasn't gone out into the forefront on this thing. Who helped us in Florida? Who helped us in New York? What nation come to our aid? Most all of the people were from Saudi Arabia that done this bombing. What did Saudi Arabia do? What do what, whoever helps whenever we have a disaster? I'm not saying that we shouldn't help. But the United States are always trying to push itself forefront. Now then they're talking some of these nations are Islamic nations. And if we would help more then maybe we could get in there before uh, Al-Qaeda does. We're always trying to go to aid of somebody to make friends with somebody that, that don't want to be our friend. I think that they said that there's Maybe 2,000 Americans that are missing over there. Well, whenever we see something like that, it's like Brother Bud said, there was a prophecy come that there would be devastation this very year. And was that true? Was the prophecy true? Was it true in Florida? When this happened in Florida, was it true? Was it true 
about the earth. This is not the only earthquake that has happened this year. There have been others, people buried, people taken out alive. But I, I tell you something, brother and sister, this was something to look at because it's showing that God's hand is able to do exactly what He said in His Word. And if you doubt it, stick around. I don't want to stick around because there's a rapture coming. That It is. It makes no difference what man says. There's a rapture coming. And we're just a short time away from it. It's also been spoken about 2,004 and a half concerning Israel. And... Brother and sister, you can begin to look for things to happen that you've never seen happen before. Disasters that you've never seen. Things happen because we've heard a truth. There's no doubt in my mind that we have heard a truth. We've heard a true message. There's been a true messenger among us that has brought truth and the thing about it is There's no time to be in despair. There's no time to be despondent. But there's a time tonight to begin to look at things as they are in our lives as they are. It's time that we look at our own selves to see where our standing is with God. We have the truth. I have no... I I have no doubt about that. But it's time that we begin to look at ourselves under God's microscope, and His microscope is His Word. In Luke 21, there's a Scripture there. Luke 21, verse 25. And there shall be signs in the sun and in the moon and in the stars and upon the earth distress of nations with perplexity, the sea and the waves roaring, men's hearts failing them for fear, And for looking after those things which are coming on the earth. For the powers of heaven shall be shaken. And then shall they see the Son of Man coming in a cloud with power and great glory. But then he goes ahead to say, that's at the end time. But he goes ahead to say, when you begin to see these things, And when these things begin to come to pass, look up and lift up your heads. For your redemption draweth nigh. I tell you what, there's a lot of sad people in this world today. There's a lot of religious people, but religion don't bring you happiness. Religion don't take the sadness away. I was watching television the other day. I don't know whose program it was centered around, but they showed Benny Hinn and others. They showed this doctor and his wife, which... The doctor didn't believe in healing. But his wife did. And she got ovarian cancer and they'd give her just a few months to live. Now he wasn't the one that prayed for her. Benny Hinn wasn't. But it was showing these things. 
And the woman believed in the power of God. And it went on for several weeks there. And as many come in and begin to pray for her, they would come to her office because she was a doctor. And some of them would even pray for her before they left. She accepted that. And before it was over with, the woman was healed. Went back and she got a clear bill of health. What are you trying to say? I'm trying to say that they majored in this. This is the major of these healing ministries today is in that getting your body healed. I can't doubt what happened because they showed x-rays before and after. But I tell you what, there's not enough gospel preached out there to put feathers in a bird's nest. Because God is letting people be fooled by the things they accept. God did a miracle. The devil don't heal. God did a miracle. But it's like Brother Jackson has said before, you can't teach them people anything. Because the Bible says that you shall know the truth. And the truth shall make you free. Sure, you can be free of disease. But what has that done to you? You can still face the tribulation time. Even though God heals your body because I have another Scripture to read to you in Mark. This is also recorded in Matthew. But Mark the 13th chapter. I'll start at the fifth verse. And Jesus answered them, begin to say, Take heed lest any man deceive you. For many shall come in my name, saying, I am Christ, I am anointed, and shall deceive many. And when you shall hear of wars and rumors of wars, be not troubled, for such things must need be. But the end shall not be yet. For nation shall rise against nation and kingdom against kingdom. And there shall be earthquakes in divers places. And there shall be famines and troubles. These are the beginning of sorrows. And then going down to the, to the tenth verse. And the gospel must first be published among all nations. Trinity Broadcast have had their little angels up there, they say, for many years. But this hasn't brought about what they said. They said we're going to have a revival. I haven't seen it. And I'm not going to see it. You say, well, there's doubt in your heart. There's doubt toward that. But I tell you one thing, the gospel 
must first be published among all nations. It must be. There's some words in there. And the gospel must be published among, among. It didn't say to everybody. Must be published among all nations. People are beginning to wonder now. Will the contender continue to be published? They're beginning to ask questions. Will it still be published? Absolutely. Because the thing about it is the message is not over. God still got a ministry in this hour. There's still things that has to go out before the people. Will the internet keep going? Absolutely. It will. Because it has to. That was a vision. That was a dream. That these things would continue. I never did care nothing about being seen on that little old screen. Sometime when I'd think about it, I'd, it bothered me. But brother, sister, the word has got to go out. Will the videos keep going? Yes. Will they keep taping? Absolutely. Brother and sister, we're not giving up in the middle of the road. We're not sitting down and doing nothing. That's what happened when Brother Branham died. We're going to ripen in the sun, and instead of ripening, they rotted. They say you shouldn't have said that. But you can't keep something in the sun over and over so long. You got to put it in a storehouse someplace or do something with it because actually it's for food. God takes his man. But he don't take his word. I remember the despondency. I remember the fear. His sister Melody was talking about. I remember the day whenever he passed, Brother Brownham passed off the scene. I remember the next morning after the wreck going into the tabernacle. But I also remember people standing at the graveside year after year on Easter morning thinking that He was going to rise. It didn't happen. It won't happen until the resurrection of the just. I've been around Brother Jackson's family. I've been around Sister Jackson since this has happened. Only thing I get 
from being around them is that I feel better. They've made me feel better after I left than when I went there. Because of the hope that they have. Every one of them! This thing must continue. The Bible says the sound has gone out. It has tonight. We didn't get great miracles. Those miracles happen. But people didn't see the miraculous thing that God was doing. I'm not wringing my hands saying, what will we do? What will we do? The thing is in God's hand. What will I do as a minister? I, I'm scared to death. The thing is in God's hand. It's not in my hand. It's not in your hand tonight. It's in God's hand. That's why I read the Scripture here. What manner of communications are these? Jesus was saying, what's wrong with you men? Can't you believe the report of these women? And then He goes back to the Scriptures. He don't go back to anything else. He goes back to the Scriptures. He brings them up to date. Brother, sister, we've been brought up to date. When God took Brother Jackson, brother, sister, we were brought up to date. What a day that we live in. What a day that we, can, we have to express something. To live something. To show the fourth the world something. I walk around with the mully grubs all the time. What have I done to the man's ministry? How have I helped? But brother or sister, this Bible says, whenever you see that day approaching, get down. Get miserable. It says, lift up your head. Look up! Your redemption's drawing nigh! Brother Bud preached Sunday morning. God's timepiece! And it is time for us as individuals to begin to get ourselves ready in those seals that were preached, it was preached. But time, that time comes, they will not be any chaff among the wheat. Amen. God's cleaning the house. It hurts. It's not a joy to see people leave. It's not a joy to see people hurt. But Jesus hurt people. He didn't baby people. But He had compassion. He had compassion on people. You, you, you take preachers... Around this world today, they're afraid they're going to lose their position. They're afraid they're going to lose their congregation. But God hadn't lost one. All that are mine, they will come, He said. They don't always see everything right at the time. They may wonder why. But the thing about it is, when they begin to settle it in their mind and in their heart, they will, they will look at the situation and they'll know God is right. He's done the right thing.
God takes His man. But He leaves us a fresh keel. That little, that little eagle, he's not looking for that parent of his to bring him anything else. He don't need a stick. His nest is already built. And that eagle is not sitting on the perch. When he's in flight, he may at times hover. Because he's looking for something. And God still has an ego ministry in this hour that's going to take us through, that's going to get us out of here. We're on our way up. We're looking up. We're not going backward. We're not going up the hill one step and going back two. Jesus never preached preached the gospel like that. He didn't say sit down. But he did say he gave certain talents to certain ones, to one five, to one two, to one one. And the only one that fell was that one with one because he hid it. It is Lord's money. Jesus said you could at least hug it at the bank. We cannot allow, and I've went over the scripture different times, we cannot allow the wolves to come in and scatter the sheep. As Paul said in Acts chapter 20, verse 28. Faith assembly has been prophesied as being a lighthouse in this end time. Brother Jackson just a few weeks ago said that the Jeffersonville area is like Jerusalem was in that hour. I'm not trying to propel myself or project myself. But I'm saying tonight that there's a people around the world that are looking to this place for something in order to anchor themselves in a ministry that will stand for truth and they won't let anything in but truth. You just might as well put a sign on the door, not for sale. Because we're not for sale. We're not going to sell out. We're not going to, we're not going to ditch this thing. Thank God for Brother Bud. He's my brother. He stood here. When people have walked away, I've seen preachers come and go in the last 37 and a half years. I've seen many of them come and go. They they come in here, they thought I didn't have anything because I wasn't the one that was making the noise. I've seen them run. I've seen them jump. But they didn't have a bit more sticky to them than nothing. Only thing they did, they'd become a burden to my brother. They didn't become a help. they become a burden. And after a while, they walked away. One after one, they walked away. Where are they tonight? Any of them that ever walked away, where are they? What message do they have? They're one message tonight. They're not two messages.
There are not two truths. There are not two ways. Brother Bud, Brother Spencer, the baton has been passed on to us. I saw a few of those races during uh, the Olympics. I saw when the, the, those uh, American girls, one of them, lost the baton at the, at the end of of her carry that forfeited the race. You can't pick it up and go on. There have been a few that have that have lost the baton. But people have hanged on to them. Because they love flesh. It didn't work in the Olympics. It won't work in this hour. It's got to be passed on to somebody that has got their hand out, ready to take hold of it. They're not after their own agenda. They're after what God has for them. Brother Jackson's family has hurt, but they have accepted this to be God's will. Will you? Will you? Do you think that God knows what He's doing? You think this thing is going to be finished? Brother Paul, it's going to be finished. We're going to be partakers of that. Because there are not two races. As well as I said, there are not two messages. Second Corinthians, the fourth chapter. Third verse. But if our gospel be hid, it is hid to them that are lost, in whom the God of this world hath blinded the mind of them which believe not, lest the light of the glorious gospel of Christ, who is the image of God, should shine unto them. For we preach not ourselves, but Christ Jesus the Lord, and ourselves your servants for Jesus' sake. For God who commandeth the light to shine out of darkness has shined in our hearts to give the light of the knowledge of the glory of God in the face of Jesus Christ. But we have these treasures in these earthen vessels. We have a treasure tonight in these earthen vessels. God give us something to look at. He's given us something to see. He's given us something to live for. That the excellency of the power of God, that the power may be of God and not of us. 
We are troubled on, on every side, but not distressed. We are perplexed, but not in despair. What was it that old John Paul Jones said? When the British attacked him, what did he say? John Paul Jones, give up! One old ragged boat. He said, I've just begun to fight. We're going to march this thing through to the end because we can see the end in sight. Some people have said, well, we need another man now to take Brother Jackson's place. Wrong. God's got a five-fold ministry that's going to finish this thing out. We are not looking for another man. We're looking for the Lord Jesus Christ. And for a ministry. There There are going to be seven of them, I know. Because there's going to be seven thunders one of these days that are going to sound. And as Brother Jackson explained it, it'll be something phenomenal like it was whenever the, uh, the seals were first ministered in 1963. going to be seven dedicated men. Not somebody that runs loose on both ends. But somebody that is that has been tested and tried and persecuted and beat down, but he's yet he's going to raise up. He don't fear men. I said the other, other night, and I had a purpose of saying that. There's some men got a backbone, somebody, some of them got a wishbone. They just wish they had a backbone. Or either that or the pulley bone. They don't know which one's going to come out longest. If you don't, you're going to usually come out on the short end of the stick. Twentieth verse of the next chapter. Now we are ambassadors for Christ. What is an ambassador? He is a man that's a representative of a nation. He's one that speaks for that nation. We speak for truth tonight. Because we know that's the only thing that's going to take us through. It's truth. Brother and sister, we're not on a bandwagon. But I tell you what, that wagon's... I used to ride wagon in the country. On an old country road. Horse and wagon, an old steel tarred wagon. As you go down that road, you had to watch. You had to hold on. Otherwise, it, it was going to hit a, a chug hole and it would bounce you off. There's chug holes in this road. Brother, sister. And there's a lot of people bouncing off. I said one time, I used to sit on a rail fence and watch the hogs. But I tell you what, it's not a comfortable place to sit. I never did see a fence that was comfortable to sit on. People are trying, they're trying to drag both sides thinking that if this side goes down, they, they, they will get on the other side, or that side goes down, they'll get on the other side. It don't work like that. You get on one side or the other. Because the thing about it is, that fence is going to get hard one of these days. It's 
going to be harder on those that are straddling the fence than it is the ones that will jump to one side or the other. How long do uh, the people that are looking for another man, how long do you think we got? We don't have another 20 years. We don't even have six months to make up our mind. I may have disturbed some people since this thing happened. I have disturbed some people. But you don't know what I was looking at. I don't want to hurt people. I don't try to hurt people. It's not my aim to hurt people. But if you're going to stand for anything, stand. What are the furies of the devil? Fear don't come from God. I never got in this thing to fear or to run or to cow down. The Bible says fear God. Somebody has said, now, what are we going to do? What do you mean, what are you going to do? I'm going to believe God just like I did when Brother Jackson was here. Only thing is, I'm going to try to tighten the reins just a little bit. I'm going to do something about my own self. If if the chaff is not among the wheat, That was said. If the chaff is not among the wheat, whenever the thunders sound, because He said there won't be any chaff, hear thunders. Like I said a while ago, I'm not trying to run anybody off. But the thing about it is, you won't run the saints of God off if you preach truth to them. And sometimes truth is corrective. It's correction. That's all I want to do. I've been corrected. My dad corrected me. I've sat here and been corrected. I didn't get up and say anything about it, but I said it in my heart. I needed that. They said, how do you three men believe the same thing? How do you get along? I mean, how do you get along like you do? We believe the same thing. Well, how do you do that? It's easy. Believe the Word. Believe the revealed truth of the hour. It's easy. Me and Brother Bud... Didn't fight to preach. We almost struggled to keep from preaching. But now then, something is laid on her shoulders. We won't shirk our responsibility. There's a responsibility that comes with truth. Uh, If I'm looking angry, I don't mean to. What are we going to do now? 
The Bible says when you've done all to stand, stand. And that's the only thing I can think of, Brother Ron, is whenever I've done all to stand, then stand, because they're, 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 we're not standing on sinking sand. What are we going to do now? The reason anyone would say that is doubt. Unbelief? Sure, all of us had questions in our mind for a little time because we were shaken. But then, it's just like water. It'll, it will seek its level. After a while, then you begin to understand God had a purpose. It was time for us to get out of the nest. Begin to learn to fly. See when the see which way that the uh, the draft is coming in, or whatever you call it, so that we you may be able to ride out on the next wave. Sure, we've been shaken. Sure, we've been hurt. But I tell you one thing. Not going to be long, we're going to see him again. Well, somebody's going to walk up and tap you on the shoulder one of these days and say, Jerry, you ready to go? Are you ready to go? And you're going to look and see. You're not going to faint. You're going to get ready. It's time. When I see Brother Jackson again, it'll be in a glorified body. It won't be in a body that I saw like I did over there in that hospital. That was his physical body. Come back in with a resurrected body. It'll be the same body, but it'll be changed. Just like your and my body will be changed. The disease will be gone. The sickness will be gone. The the things that they are majoring in, in the religious world, brother or sister, that won't change their body. It might give them hope for a little while, but I tell you what, sickness will come again. But the thing about it is, Jesus didn't Jesus didn't resist them taking his life. He could have. But he didn't resist that. The thing he, he told his disciples, he gave them instructions. These here that I read about a while ago. What manner of communications are these that He said unto them? Whenever they begin to look at the thing and all, after that He had talked to them and He introduced to who He was, and when He walked away, they said, Did not our hearts burn within us? (laughs) Brother, sister, there's hope tonight. There's not despair. There's hope. There's something inside us that's saying it's time to get ready. Am I saying that you're not hurting? That you are feeling good about the situation? I'm not saying that at all. But I'm saying this tonight. We were left with something. If you're dad, this is better than the lottery. <laughs> and people are miserable that's won those lotteries. 
They don't know where to live now because all their neighbors are mad at them. You get a little something, then people get mad at you because they think you should give it to them. Brother, sister, there's something better than that to give tonight. It's up to us to accept it. One of these days, that life soul is going to come in. And you can't do anything about it. You can't hinder the coming of the Lord just like they couldn't hinder that thing over there. As I, as I read the other time in, in Hebrews, the twelfth chapter, the twelfth verse, it said, Lift up the, the hands that hang down. Do you ever see anybody get so burdened? They just even get stooped shoulders. Lift up those hands. Straighten up these shoulders. The Bible says, quit yourself like men. If we ever acted like men and women of truth, it's in the hour we're living in. I have hope tonight. Hope in the gospel message that I've heard. A lot of people had their hope in Brother Branham, in the man. I've got hope in the message he brought. But I, but the man is gone. They can stay now until the resurrection. They won't see him come back to Lynn. But we have hope. What manner of communications are these that you that you have? They were down. Their master was gone. They were in despair. They weren't willing to ready to believe anybody. We saw it. I tell you one thing though, that Holy Ghost will give you a new hope. He'll give you a new purpose, a purpose to go on and and to let people see I'm going on. It's all right to shed tears. But don't let the devil get you down. If he does, then he's got you. Whenever I whenever I see my brothers and my sisters that have experienced this thing, gone through this experience of things. And I see them beginning to look up, look up. Then I know that they have hope beyond the grave. Hope in a message of truth that one, one of these days before long it's going to get them out of here. We've got something to live. Some people say, well, I've got something to die for. I've got something to live for tonight. And I'm going to look up. Because our redemption's drawing nigh. If there's any weakness that's in my flesh, it's not in the God that, in the God that I serve. He's stronger than our old carcass is. He gives us what is it from day to day, strength from day to day. We're not nursing our feelings.
But if we got anything, if we got anything of what we've heard, we've got hope. And we've got a we've got a great God that's able to take us through all kinds of trials and tests and troubles that come our way. Heavenly Father, now as I look to you tonight, bringing my thought to the clo- to a close, may you bless your people, Lord, that have come out to be able to hear these things. And Lord, I pray for them tonight. Encourage their hearts, their minds. Give them your blessings, your hand upon them, Lord. Help this family of God, Lord, to look unto You in this time. And Lord, Brother Jackson's family, Brother Relford's family, and Sister Eve, Lord, that have all lost loved ones in the last little while. Give them strength, Lord. Bless their lives. Help them through their lonely days. Give them peace of mind. Lord, we pray this in Jesus Christ's name. Amen.